Hello, this is Mark Warren, and I'm back with another quick video um, on my vision restoration journey. And today I'm not going to talk about any of the habit building techniques or anything like that I've done, but I want to ask a question that I want you to really think about. If myopia is caused by ciliary lockup and you end up getting pseudomyopia, why is it that people who don't wear glasses can do stuff in front of a computer all day long, be on their smartphones all day long, but yet they have 20-20 or better vision? If it were the case that our ciliary locks up from being too much, having too much close-up all the time, how come everybody doesn't have myopia? So that's the question that got me started on the journey that I'm on now that made me change the way I looked at vision. My brother, he's the only one in my immediate family that doesn't wear glasses. He has 20-20 vision. My sister wears glasses, my mom and my dad wears glasses. Now my wife and her family, her sister is the only one in the family that doesn't wear glasses. Her dad wears glasses, her mom wears glasses, and she wears glasses. Usually she's wearing contacts. So my brother, he sits in an office building behind the computer for over eight hours a day, sometimes 10, 10 to 12 hours a day. He's on his phone, but he is a bit more active. When he's usually not at work, he's doing activities outside. So that's one example. Maybe it's the outdoor sports that keeps his vision uh, sharp, you know, indoor sports, tennis, things like that. My sister-in-law, on the other hand, she sits in an office for eight hours a day after that, she has her own side business in which she's working an additional usually three to five hours more on the computer. She's on her smartphone all day. She's either emailing or texting people back from things related to her business and personal. So she's on the computer and her smartphone more than me doesn't have nearly the amount of activity, outdoor activities as my brother, but yet she doesn't wear glasses either. That's what got me thinking and taking me on the path that I'm on now. That what is it that people who have 20-20 vision doing or seeing that we're not? And that's when I started thinking about the peripheral and peripheral movement. It started out with just triangulation, just seeing objects in your peripheral. And that did sharpen my peripheral quite a bit. I can recognize objects. I don't see them sharply because the center of your vision is the sharpest but I can clearly recognize the shape, usually the color, and sometimes even if the words are big enough on that particular object in my peripheral, I can read that without looking at it directly. So my peripheral vision got started with all, uh, got better with all of this. Uh, now, then that led me down to movement. If we're not seeing movement in our peripheral, it keeps our central vision from being sharp. So. I want to tell you about two things that happened to me this week. Uh, this past Friday, I had a lot of projects to do before I had punched out of work. So I was working in front of my computer for over four hours. That's a long time to be looking at a screen. Now, when I work at my computer, I work at the edge of double vision. So not the edge of blur because my vision isn't so much blurry anymore. I just have double vision ghosted images. And that's what I'm trying to clear up right now. So. I work at that edge of where I start to see double vision and as I work, as long as I'm noticing movement in my peripheral, the left, right moving, up, down, uh, my water bottle shifting this way, that way, as I'm reading on the screen, I can usually clear up that double vision. But this was an extreme long amount of time that I had to do this, so yeah, I had to get this stuff done. But the entire time I was aware of that movement. I was noticing that movement. I was looking for that movement. And it's getting so easy to see now that it's, it's become habit for me. So I did that the entire time, finished up everything. And when I finally decided to take a break, I got up, started walking around the house, looking at things in the distance. My vision was better. Normally when I first get up to look at stuff in the distance, my double vision might be something like this. It's really far and shifted over here. Well, this time I get up and start walking around and it's over here. And normally, as long as I start moving around and start noticing more movement in the, the distance, my double vision usually goes from here to here. But this time it was already over here. 
So my vision actually got better from working up close. So how does that happen? And again, I believe it goes back to seeing movement and peripheral objects. So later on that evening, my sister-in-law, my wife's sister, she came over for dinner and we had dinner and we were just sitting there having a conversation. She knows I've been doing this vision restoration stuff for a while and we were talking a little bit about it. She doesn't know all the details, but I said, let me ask you something. I said, when you're looking at me, what do you see? I said, just describe everything you see. So she sat and thought about it for a minute. She goes, well, I see you. I see your china closet over here. I see the cabinet back there. I see the fan turning in the living room over there. You know, she's describing all these things. I see the wine glass that's in front of me here. She's describing all the things that she's seeing in addition to me while she's looking straight at me. And I said, okay. And I said, do this. I want you to look at me and then look at your sister. Just look back and forth between the two of us. And I'm also watching her eyes as she's doing this. And so she looked at me and looked back and I said, tell me everything that you see as you're doing that. And so she goes, well, when I look over at you, the stuff in front of me goes a little bit like this and the stuff behind kind of shifts at the same time, but I'm only looking at her, but I see a little bit of this movement here. And I said, exactly. And I said, you know, that's what I figured out two months ago about vision is we should be seeing certain types of movement when we move our head. And I noticed her eyes didn't move the same. I know before I started all of this, if I wanted to look at somebody, I would move my eyes first and then turn my head and I wouldn't see all this other movement. So I'm using all these extra ocular muscles, the muscles that you can move your eyes up, down, left and right. I'm using those like way too much. Now I don't do that. In fact, it hurts me to do that. So I noticed she wasn't using those muscles either. Everything was a smooth transition between where she was looking and what she was seeing. And I said, when you move your head around, like if you're just sitting here bouncing your head around, is all this stuff doing the same? She goes, yeah. And I said, here's the thing. I was like, we who have nearsighted issues, myopia, we don't see that. I said, until I started realizing it, I never saw that. I said, if I'm looking at you, I only saw you. I never saw movement. I knew objects were over here. Yeah, they're in your peripheral. I knew they were there, but I wasn't seeing them move around, shift up and down, left, right. I just knew there was something there, but I was so fixed on you that I felt the strain. And even now when I do it, I start feeling that strain in my upper eye uh, muscles. I'm feeling all that strain up here in tension because I'm straining so hard to see you versus relaxing and seeing everything and then that center just sharpens up on its own. So that was two things that happened to me this week that confirmed it's not just about close up that causes your vision to have issues. It's also the fact that you're not seeing things that you should be seeing. And the more you start paying attention to these things around you, that's when your center just starts working all by itself. I'm now at the point I used to struggle seeing things indoors with lower light. Now my eyes are starting to move more fluidly inside. Like I'm looking at the camera and I'm moving my head. Again, I'm seeing all this movement in my peripheral and sides of all these different objects. And I can make out all these different objects clearly without looking at them directly now. And it's sharpening my indoor vision even better now for the stuff that's in the distance. So that's the question I want you to think about and ask people in your own family or maybe close friends. If you don't have anybody in your family that doesn't wear glasses, ask close friends that don't wear glasses. What do you see when you're seeing and pay attention, look at their eyes, how they're moving. Do you move your eyes the same? Like I said, I really do believe now that I've gotten into this, we weren't meant to move our eyes around that much. It puts a lot of strain and tension on the whole visual system. We should be fluently moving. Now when I move my eyes, if I move down, my eyes automatically roll down. I'm not physically going like this. They are 
moving down and I feel no tension in my muscles. So it's, it's things like that that has gotten me to think just beyond the issue of looking at stuff close up. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and given you something to think about. Um, so whether you're doing in myopia baits or some other type of vision restoration technique, think about that. Ask people around and watch. And that's how I learned to get to the point that I am today. This is Mark Warren. We'll catch you on the next one.